Hello, this is Sula speaking, and welcome to part two of a commentary on Le League of Legends, this video featuring Karthus. Right yeah, at this point in time, we just had one of our champions killed mid, uh, and I had a request to use my ultimate, Requiem, uh, but unfortunately it was not successful. I believe that Shen limped away with like 10% uh, of his health left, so that was unfortunate, but uh, didn't quite work. And there, I tried to lay down my Wall of Pain to catch Master Yi, but uh, unfortunately failed again with that. I uh, wasn't having too much luck with the wall, at least at the start. Right there, we were getting in a few quick hits on the tower, but then we have to back off and retreat because uh, the tower slayed all of our minions. One thing I'll mention about Karthus's Requiem skill, his ultimate, is that if you're playing in just a game with random people, it's not nearly as effective as if you're playing in an organized team and your group is communicating together on TeamSpeak or on Vent or something like that, because your friends can uh, obviously help you see the map and they can say, hey look, uh, you know, somebody's trying to sneak away, they're almost dead, pop off your ultimate. Um, so that's one reason why I like using Karthus more when I can actually be in a pre-made team than, you know, with just a group of random people. I mean, you can watch the map as best you can, but obviously you're not going to be able to see everything as well as if you're, when you're playing with a full pre-made team. Now, Master Yi's gone back to heal. He was pretty low, and now he's back with full health and full mana again. So we'll, we'll have to contend with him. I tell, try to tell my partner to be careful. And he doesn't listen, he's taking on Master Yi, which is a big mistake. You don't want to take on Yi one-on-one, -on -one, especially if he's a higher level. Then Shen uses his ultimate and joins in, uh, teleporting in from across the map. And of course, that's all for Malphite. He's not able to get away. He makes it back to the tower, but you know that's all he can do. Here, they could kill me, except that they were going to have to take a ton of tower fire to do it, so they back off. Um, even though I am out of mana... Uh, they still have to back off because of the tower. I was going to go back to base, but then I saw this big creep wave appearing, so I have to stay here and do my best to defend the tower. If not, Shen will just sit there and uh, attack the tower over and over again, and they'll either destroy it or get it you know, really close to death. I ping the tower to let people know to try and help me, but uh, nobody's coming, unfortunately, so all I can do is just do the best I can. If both Shen and Master Yi jump me and use their uh, use their skills, they probably could actually kill me here, but instead they choose to focus on the tower, and so I'm able to survive and uh, hold out here. And now uh, Earthstrike and uh, playing as a Mumu and our Malphite player are starting to head down this way, so finally I can port back to base and uh, heal up. Uh, difficult, difficult situation there, but uh, we managed to handle it pretty well. The tower took some damage, but uh, not, not as bad as it could have been. Unfortunately, though, our Malphite player did get killed there. All right, there you go. Now, maybe. Master Yi is uh, basically a damage per second champion. He does one thing, and that's attack other champions, and he does it quite well. But uh, the problem with Yi is that he doesn't have any crowd control skills. He can't slow people. He can't stun people. And for that reason, he's actually not considered one of the better champions in this game. I mean, he'll do a ton of damage. Make no mistake about that. But that's all he can do. And there are other champions that can do that and stun people on the other team. Stuns and slows are key in this game. They're some of the most important abilities. Uh, that's why champions that have them are generally preferred over those that don't. Anyway, Master Yi is also a higher level than we are due to the fact that um, he has been playing in a solo lane. And that means he's been getting all the experience from minion deaths as opposed to us who has been splitting them between the two of us. Master Yi is trying to run away and so I pop off my ultimate which would kill him, except that he uh, channels his Meditate ability, which heals him. Otherwise, Yi would in fact have died there. But he was able to heal himself, and you can see he teleports back with basically no health left. But Shen chooses to stick around. I throw down a wall so that he can't run away, and we manage to kill him. I actually kill him with Karthus's auto attack, if you can believe that. So Karthus's piddly little... Uh, melee attack manages to take him down so that was a nice kill for us we just barely had enough damage to kill him and now that uh now that master Yi is off healing and now that shen's dead we're going to get in a few shots on the tower here and you see me using my defile but i venture a little bit too far away and uh master Yi's back and he's up again i throw down my wall which would slow him except that he's popped his ultimate highlander which means he can't be slowed and so master Yi's going to kill me and then he's going to take down our malphite as well or is he going to take down our Malphite? Oh, I guess not. I thought that he actually got him here. But no, Malphite just manages to get away. I must have uh, misremembered from when I actually played this game. All right, so Malphite did get away, but uh, I, of course, was taken down. Now, the problem there, as I said, was 
use ultimate, so he couldn't be slowed. My wall did nothing, he just ran through it. And then secondly, the other problem was my ghost summoner spill was on cool, was on cooldown. You see it right there. So if I had had ghost up, I probably would have at least had a chance to get out of that. Um, but without it, with it on cooldown, there wasn't much I could do. And then finally, the other problem was I just went a little bit too far forward in terms of pushing that tower. If I'd stayed back a little bit more, I might have been okay. So a couple of different things combined there, uh, resulting in my death. I had initially tried to go mid because uh, I saw that Ape was pretty beat up, and I asked if he wanted me to come and take over the lane, but he said he would be okay, and uh, it turned out that he would be, fortunately. Alright, what I'm doing here is picking up the Golem buff. You can see on the right it says Ancient Golem. Slaying this foe increases mono regeneration and decreases cooldowns. So this is generally referred to as the blue buff for obvious reasons. It's, you know, you can see that if you get it, you have this little glowing blue circle around you. Killing the Golem is very helpful for characters that use a lot of mana. Any casting champion, or really just anyone in general, almost anyone can benefit and benefit quite well from the blue Golem buff. So I took the time to pick that up. While I was doing so, we lost our tower over here. So uh, was it worth it? I'm not sure. That tower was close to going down anyway, but uh, I might not have gone over there if I had known. Now, Warwick pops out of the jungle, and so that means we have to get out of there, and we are just able to get Malphite out of there again, fortunately. Uh, as soon as Warwick showed up, I, that was the cue, get out of there, don't, uh, don't stick around, don't try to fight this battle. So uh, we were able to get rid of him. Now, with all the minions coming into the tower, I'll turn on my Defile skill, which will do a lot of damage and uh, helps me kill them quickly. If you notice my mana bar, you can see it refilling very quickly, so long as I have this uh, Golem buff up. And you can also see on the interface, right above my QWER skills, there's a little timer that's slowly ticking down, and that shows for how much longer I'll have the, uh, the Golem blue buff up on me. So it's great on a character like Karthus, great on any mage champion, anyone who uses a lot of mana. Here, we actually had some miscommunication on our TeamSpeak server. I was asked if I needed help over on the bottom lane, and I said, no, I don't need help. And unfortunately, we got confused there, and uh, we took that to mean that we didn't need help in the middle lane, which was wrong. So a uh, little bit of a mix-up there, and that's why our middle tower was completely undefended. Now a team fight's breaking out, and I'm trying to catch up to it. Um, looks like Morgana's getting away, but I kill her with my ultimate. <laughs> I really do enjoy that that uh, Requiem ultimate. Uh, absolutely perfect for a situation like this. Now we're going to go out to the tower here, and Yi pops out, but Yi is trying to take on the entire enemy team at once, which is not smart. He manages to kill Earthstrike, but uh, he can't kill all of us, so we kill him. Was it worthwhile to do it? Uh, probably yes, because he did manage to kill Earthstrike, and he managed to delay us getting the tower. But now their Nasus charges in, and Nasus is fighting three on one, and that's not a good fight for him. So we kill him, and we actually score an ace here. The one different thing is that when you score an ace at this point in time, see we're only 19 minutes into the game right now, uh, the longer the game goes on, the longer you stay dead. So at the moment, our characters uh, aren't going to stay, their team isn't going to stay dead for too long, so they'll pop back up quickly. Thus, scoring an ace later in the game is much more significant than scoring an ace early in the game. So we got the tower down, but that's all we could really do. Now I see my team's in trouble mid, so I use teleport to get in there, and I throw down my wall to slow them, and that helps Ape get away. Um, he might have gotten away anyway, but there was no reason to take chances. That's another reason why I like using teleport. Um, it's just a very versatile summer, summoner skill, and of course it's on cooldown now, but I'll be able to use it again in about three or four minutes. Now Warwick sticks around too long, we're able to initiate with Earth Strike, and then the rest of the team piles on and he dies very quickly. Um, mistake on his part. Now we're getting close to the tower, so I have to back off. I actually didn't realize I was that close to the tower. See, we've gone from the initial laning phase now into more of the team fight phase. Early on in the game, everybody will spread out because if people are in different lanes, they can, you can get more experience. If everybody piles into the same lane, you're not getting much experience because the uh, experience from the minion kills has to be divided amongst every player. That's why everybody spreads out early in the game. Here, we were trying to set up a kill on Master Yi, but uh, he sneaks away. Uh, he was he wisely decides not to push our tower forward and gets out of there. So good decision on his part. Meanwhile, we will now that we have most of our team top, we will farm up these uh, these minions here. I'm getting a lot of them with my skill. And then because a lot of their team, we can see that they are Morganas down in the bottom lane. We are going to push on this tower, and we have a good chance of uh, destroying it. We've got three of us here: Earthstrike, Atlas, and myself. 
And meanwhile, uh, Ape, Ape is coming out of the bushes on the side. Now this is a good fight in the sense that it's two on four, but it's a bad fight in the sense that we're right by the tower, so we're all taking a lot of damage. We managed to kill Warwick, and meanwhile I'm taking the tower fire, and oh, just barely managed to get away. I know that some other people on their team are low on health, so I'm going to pop off my ultimate again. And you see Shen is almost dead, and I kill him with my ultimate. But I'm so low on health, I can't stick around. Uh, that was a pretty even exchange there, I think, between the two teams. But uh, an even exchange wherein we do damage to the tower is a pretty good fight for us overall. So I'm able to get out of there. Ape's able to get out of there. Uh, but we did lose a couple people on our team. We did lose Earthstrike there. Uh, overall, though, still probably a good fight. If Malphite had been in there, we might have been able to do even better, but uh, he was kind of out of position. I'm, I, I think he was covering another part of the map. Now the creeps have pushed up on the uh, middle lane, so uh, Ape's going to take care of that while I head to the top to try and get in this team fight. but Karthus is slow, and I'm late in getting there, so it's going to be mostly over by the time I get there. And there, Atlas manages to kill Master Yi. He used uh, Exhaust to slow him down, so he couldn't move that fast. Now the two of them are fighting against Nasus, and Nasus is about to die, but he slips away. And because Atlas and Malphite are so injured, they can't chase, they can't pursue. Um, can't go charging into that tower. We'd love to go in here, but our characters are just too damaged. So uh, Atlas tells us over the team speak that he's not going to stay in that fight, he's going to get out of there. But uh, there was again some confusion, Ape apparently didn't hear that, and so Ape charges in to fight the enemy team. Um, and unfortunately that means he's going to die because he's fighting a one on three. So again, miscommunication, um, Ape thought that we were engaging, Atlas thought that we were pulling out, so that's why we had that situation there. Um, even when you're on voice chat you can still get mixed up sometimes, so uh, misplay by our team there. Um, if we had been engaging then it was absolutely the right play for Ape to go charging in there. Uh, Taking tower fire or no, you, you know, you, if there's going to be a team fight, you have to jump in and support the rest. So, mistake of communication there. Now, Nasus and Warwick are pushing on against our top tower, but with the, all of us here, they're not going to be able to do anything. In fact, right there, I tried to slow them, but as it turned out, we weren't quite able to engage. Now, I'm all out of mana, so I'm going to have to go back go back to base to uh, heal up again. Of course the golem buff that I got before has worn out and it was nice having it while it lasted but it'll be a minute or two before it comes back up again. So I have to go back to base. The good news is I can finish my Rod of Ages. If you, if you saw there on the buying screen the little um, tree that you buy of items, item tree I guess you'd call it. Uh, what Rod of Ages does, it's a rather expensive item, I think it costs roughly 3,000 gold, but it, it gives you ability power, health, and mana. And for every minute that the game goes on, it will add more health, more mana, and more ability power, up to a total of 15 minutes. So if you can build it early enough in the game, for example here I've got it about 24 minutes into the game, then uh, over the, as long as the, the match goes another 15 minutes, uh, you get very, very good value for, uh, for the money that you spend. So if you're going to build Rod of Ages, you want to build it first, or very close to first, right at the start of the game. If you build it late, it's not a particularly good investment. So I like to build Rod of Ages with a lot of casting characters. Here Yi tries to jump out of the jungle and tries to kill us. So am I going to get away? I pop my ghost skill. Ghost Summoner skill, and he backs off for some reason, I'm not exactly okay. sure why. Okay. And am I going to get away? Well, thanks for watching, and find out in part 3.